Time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Uh, First Blood has gone to Mooney uh, through the vessel of Rizik the Red, the wizard with his flame burst. Um, I made an error, however. Dingo and and it's good that my uh, I've been getting rules I've been getting rules wrong since I've first played games, which I think most people have. But I've developed a sense, a little a tingle in my brain. Um, like the amazing Spider-Man, except mine is a rules wrong sense, and I was starting to get a rules wrong sense. I was never too comfortable with the double amaze imprisonment, um, so I double checked, and he would have had to lose half of his health in order to be in prison. So Dingo Jake gets to be in the swamp. I was I was all set to to wax poetic about the tragedy of being um, torn away from the swamp when he was about to attain it, or had just attained it, depending on where the opportunity fire was. Um, I didn't mark the opportunity fire because the penalty was the same, um, and I didn't think he was going to die. I thought, you know, the two possible outcomes were he would either get damaged, which he did, or get imprisoned, which he didn't. And I guess getting imprisoned was not a possible outcome. So as long as it was a minus one, it was a minus one. So, oh, it would have been before, because otherwise he would have had a, a, uh, an additional penalty to the hit roll. So he would have done it before he got to the swamp, which, you know, I don't know, I don't know which is sadder. Um, but I guess since it didn't happen, we don't even have to think about it. But maybe we could. Which do you think is sadder? And you can answer me or not. You can call out. Um, I may hear you. Uh, do you think it's sadder to, you know, work to get the thing that you really want, um, get it, and then have it taken away right away? Or work to get the thing that you want, uh, be about to get it, and then get it taken away? Um, discuss. So here we have Dingo Jake in his swamp. He was about to get Rizik the Red on Red Tomato's turn, but Rizik the Red has this magical teleport, and he teleported right through the wall, right to here. He could have gone right to the adventure, but he trusts that Ryan, who's a per really good adventure, and I would wager, without looking at them too carefully, probably the best adventure on Mooney's team. So... Mooney is or Mooney is going to have Ryan adventure there, and if he passes, Rizik the Red gets to adventure. Bam, bam. Um, less advisable is sending Kid to try and take this one. Kid's strength is not very high, but that's less interesting. Um, except that there's going to be a couple adventures happening. Ghana is about to try an ancient adventure, and that's going to happen. And I'll let you be witness to that. But first, I want to look at the developments down here with the Iron Pole and um, Nerve Puppet, and Boudica. I think Boudica, not Boudica. Um, so Iron Pole went up this way, is running away. Boudica, you know, and it would have been nice if Boudica was a little bit further away because then he'd go in a tunnel. He just feels comfortable in tunnels. He likes to go in tunnels. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not going to work it out right now. I'll wait till, till the next turn to see if Boudica can... Um, make use of whatever ranged weapon he has. Let's turn over this modern labyrinth. It's a brainy thing. Ryan's good at brains. Um, yep, yep. And if he gets doubles, he can re-roll to see if he does better. So he's got to get an eight or better to pass. Or eight or better to squeak. Eight to squeak. Better to pass. He got an eight, so he squeaked it. Um, that's not double, so he can't re-roll. But he does get a card, and that'll be good for him. Um, unfortunately, the marker doesn't move, so um, Mr. Magician can't do it. But Mr. Magician has a white brain, so that's going to, to help. Um, let's take a look at this one now. Here we have a green brain. Ghana's actually pretty smart. And I guess you could you could see a mimic being smart. So he needs a 9 to squeak. And he got an 11. That's a failure. Fun turn. End of turn seven. It, things are heating up. Iron Pole is here still. Uh, Boudica, the Hand of Vengeance, has come up this way. Um, Boleen did use that uh, jumpy thing, jump pad, to get here, went around, and is at an adventure space. Nerve Puppet is giving chase to the Iron Pole. A lot of adventures about to happen. So we have Sergeant Grit up here. He had a choice between war and order, and he chose, um, well, he, Red Tomato anyway, chose order for him. The reason why he had those two choices is because those are the things that 
he excels at uh, are war and order. War is a, a target and order is a hand. So that's what's going on there. And then um, Gillis is another for sure um, special thing for giving there. So that is going to allow them to get extra things in their So let's roll Sergeant Grit, and he needs to get a 7 or better. He got a 2. He is going to get a card out of that. Alright, and I guess, you know, technically I should do this first. So I'm just going to cut from there. Nightstick for Sergeant Grit. And I'll roll 6, gets him 1. I think he would like to be up here. Alright, and now who else needs to roll? Does anyone? Oh yeah, Boolean does. He needs to roll. Does he have any... 11. Now let's see if he has any special abilities that relate to this. If banished, ignore it. No, 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 enemy maneuver. Okay, so he's just going to dismiss like normal. Six. So Sergeant Grit and... Jerry Gillis were both successful. Uh, Boolean was not, however. So here's what they got. Order makes it so that the enemy, if they roll a 9 to 11, they lose their weapon, which is very bad for them, very bad for Mooney. Um, it's going to make him have to think twice before taking some maybe um, tougher shots. He, he wants to have, have a good chance of hitting before rolling is probably what that would discourage um, or encourage. Giving is is another nice one that gets some cards. Uh, Red Tomato has a free action. He gets if there are three or less cards in the vault, he gets to put two cards in the vault. So if he can get Jerry Gillis over here to just pick up the less interesting cards, so that they're not in the vault, um, there can be this fountain of cards just pouring in. That might um, prompt Mooney to try and get in here and do some damage. I don't know. Countess is there alone. She's got a couple cards, however, so maybe she has something useful. I don't know. that It, it would have to be very good to work with these horrible stats. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Jerry Gillis, however, is in kind of a tough position. I, I would say a tough position. So if you see he's here, there's Thump the Giant. He's got a rock that he's ready to throw. If Jerry Gillis goes anywhere, Thump can throw a rock at him. And Thump might have something else he can throw. If you remember, you will know what this card is and whether or not it's something he can throw at Jerry Gillis. We're at the end of the white team's phase uh, for turn eight. Minx and Jinx have Ryan, who, as you recall, is probably Mooney's best adventure, pinned right here in this two dome. So he uh, had Kid going towards this rather unlikely challenge. He was probably not going to win it. Um, he went to the Tower of Maneuver instead. Rizik is also going to try his hand at the Odysseus program, the first attempted man landing on Mars. So let's do that first. Let's try to man land on Mars. I like the idea of this wizard on Mars. Um, there's some rather hefty benefits to success. So it's white against yellow. Eight or better. Oh, he amazed it. So, he gets to draw four cards and place them in his team's vault. And he gets three cards for himself. That's great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss him, and then I'll draw cards off camera. I'm going to bring white team up one. Wow. That's the first score for Mooney. Um, so, five will get you sick. You know, five is empty. He can go right here. He has no choice but to go there, which is not a bad spot for him. Um, and then back up to the Tower of Maneuver. He's got to get eight or better. And he got a seven. So that passed. I'll have to check what that's going to let him do. It's going to let him dismiss an ally or banish an enemy. Let's see. What would be better for him here? He minks and jinx isn't anywhere that interesting but neither is Ryan really however ooh, let's see what Ryan has Ryan's got some good cards he could go and try and mess with yeah I think Mooney would do that he is going to banish Minx and Jinx kids appearance in this two dome really um 
gave Red Tomato a tough decision. He was planning on trying to maneuver Bautica and Nerve Puppet to, to capture um, or hurt somehow the Iron Pole. However, you know, kids showed up here, and if Nerve Puppet comes after the Iron Pole, that's going to leave this path open down here for the kid, which um, would make things a lot easier for Mooney. So he has a choice to make. He can either continue his pursuit with both of them, or he can, um, you know, back up Nerve Puppet back here to kind of force kid to go a certain way. It's generally, unless kid has a really nice card here, um, which he has a kitty cat, uh, it's, he would not have a good shot at, at taking the nerve puppet on in melee combat. Um, and though he could outrun him, so if he could, if he could get through one round of combat, which he certainly could, um, he could outrun him, but you know, he'd be damaged. So, um, here's what, Here's the way Red Tomato is. He's going to try and use this thing and just see if he something special happens. So one, two, six. So that's going to take him the complete wrong direction. Looks like he's going to be giving up on the iron pole for now. Depends on how far he jumps. Six spaces, the six direction. One, two, Adjust that one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa, right in the middle here. So he's going to get some opportunity fire from Thotus and Thump. Um, I looked it up. Uh, the movement cost for the jump pad is zero. So I'm assuming there's no opportunity fire there um, unless he goes, you know, somewhere within the line of sight of Thotus. Uh, if he moves at all, though, Thump would. Well, he has a choice. If he moves here. Um, Thump would, actually they'd both be able to have line of sight. So if he moves here, only Thump would be able to, uh, opportunity to fire him. If he moves here, of course they all would be able to, but he could get a shot at Thotus right now. Um, so that's something for Red Tom Tomato to consider. So you know he doesn't have to risk mind control unless he wants to. So Thump was able to throw rocks at both of them. He hit Jerry Gillis, but it didn't get through his chainmail armor. So Jerry Gillis is okay, and he missed Baudica. So Baudica is okay. Uh, the two of them ended up over here. And now it's going to be time for um, Black's adventure phase. And we have Milena Arrebato over here in the Modern Labyrinth. She has got to face an intelligence test, and that's gonna be a straight up seven to squeak. She failed, so she is going to dismiss to three. Which she could just probably going to go right back up here. Though, you know, she I'm going to stop and debate a second about whether he wants to try to send Milena Arabato to Payne High School or back to the Modern Lab. So it looks like, for now, the Iron Pole has escaped. Um, he's faced, faced with Baudica again. Uh, Baudica, however, did not offer up any opportunity fire when he moved into that building. Maybe because the building would be too hard for him to hit and he doesn't want to reveal uh, the weapon. Or maybe the weapon just doesn't have far enough range. But we have a new situation. Ryan, the investigator, is not so much investigating but more in trying to sneak into the main gate of the black team's headquarters. Countess is sitting right there, so he's got to make a stealth roll. Green against yellow. So he needs a six or better. And he got a seven, so he is going to stay out uh, for this turn. Eight. Bouline has finally passed. Well, not finally. It, only took, it was his second attempt, but it seemed like it should have been easier for him. He passed that mercenary thing, so that's going to put him at three. Let's see. Seems like he might want to go down here now. Yeah. All right, Dingo Jake is going to try Mary Payson, um, the toughest lawyer in the state. She has Dingo Jake on the stand, and she's out for Dingo Jake's blood. Dingo Jake amazed it. He needed a seven to squeak. He got a three. That's exciting. I thought for, that this would be a tough one. Um, he may choose to remain, and I think he's going to do that. So he's going to stay in the labyrinth and get to hang out next turn. So let's talk about our situations. We have Thotis holding off Jerry Gillis here. Jerry Gillis is trying to um, advance 
the marker that Boulin had started to advance. Um, he's unable to get through this water, and if he goes up, he risks uh, enslavement or some sort of mental damage from Thotis. And Rizik the Red's also there with something. Um, Thump has a card, too. They, they made some trades, so there could be something dangerous for him there. Um, that's kind of one situation. Uh, another situation is the whole uh, modern labyrinth. Red Tomato's got a quite a nice little route going here, and he's starting to pour guys in. He's finally made an advancement with Dingo Jake. Um, has to decide what to do with Dingo Jake. Dingo Jake has a couple cards now, so he could be a little more effective in the swamps. His sort of plan was to have Dingo Jake rule these swamps and kind of control the heart of the board. Uh, it's going to be hard to to penetrate too far into this side though with this block of people that Mooney has committed there. Um, Mooney for his part he's got he got Kid away from Nerve Puppet so Nerve Puppet went over there. Kid's coming around this way um, not sure where he's going to go yet that will be a decision for another day but um, interesting this is an interesting situation I think Ryan and the Countess Countess has um, been collecting more and more cards from the vault she moved over more and she has three cards now um, at the start of her turn she's going to be get, able to get another one Ryan might be in by by then though especially if he takes the low gate he could just go walk right in at the cost of a card we'll see if he wants to do that so next time we're going to be starting turn 10 um, the situation we have is Two to one is basically the score. There hasn't been a whole lot of uh, bloodshed. Just Dingo Jake with one hit. Card-wise, people look about even. I think Mooney maybe has the advantage, at least in terms of even distribution of cards. Um, the Countess has a lot of cards here. Um, Mooney's got a lot of cards in his vault, and he's got a lot of characters near the vault. And I just want to show you these cards real quick, because there's some nice ones. There's a Sky Gopher, which is very useful in trading cards. It's a bummer, actually, that um, Red Tomato doesn't have the Sky Gopher, because I think it can trade cards with people who normally can't trade cards. So Jerry Gillis could start getting some of those cards. It has a pistol. Um, another pistol. We haven't seen any, really any strong guns in the game yet. Um, these pistols, Rizik the Red could use these quite well. And then there's a sharpshooter's badge. Not a bad badge to have. Um, he's got a number of people near that vault who don't have um, a target, a very good target rating, so they could suddenly have that and then, you know, get a gun with a target. I don't think he has any guns like that. Um, He's, he's definitely controlling, you know, the kind of middle key, which, which is one of the most populous keys with that chunk of, chunk of people. By he, I mean Mooney. Um, that's kind of what he's got going for him. That, you know, the, the, the whole Ryan Countess Gambit could, could go well. Um, in terms of other things, Red Tomato ha is building up on these special powers, and I think these could still make the game for him even if he's not really controlling the board as well. Um, he's got a lot of guys on the run or just kind of hiding out. Um, though the flow of people through the Modern Labyrinth could start to get him some cards pretty soon here, some cards that he can use. We saw that with Dingo Jake, Sergeant Grit, fortunately just got a nightstick. You know, it ups his penetration one, but it isn't going to make a huge difference. Minx and Jinx have some nice weapons, but they have to get in close in order to use them. Um, but perhaps they can get over to the domes and start hurling things over. But they'll all, they'll have to contend with Thump, because um, he can hurl things as well. So, uh, it could go either way. I really don't know what's going to happen next time. I'm excited to play tomorrow. I'm so tired, so I'm going to stop right now. Uh, real people, oh, <laughs>